So you'll have meat on the market in about 18 months. It will still be more expensive than the conventional uh, meats, but I estimate that what I call griddle parity, which is when we get to the same price point of conventional foods uh, and uh, sell ag foods, is about five years away, at which point the game is over. Hello, world. This is the Impact Investing Show, where we think and learn about how to save the world and improve the lives of all conscious creatures by acting today and investing into the future. I'm Lennart Schelter. Welcome to the show. So that charming guy you saw on the intro was none other than Jim Mellon. Jim Mellon is a, and I quote from his own book, Moose Law here, a visionary British entrepreneur, investor, author and philanthropist with interests in a number of sectors. Mr. Mellon is a billionaire, he owns a bunch of real estate and he is very active in many companies and committees, but for our purposes he is most importantly the co-founder and director of the public company Agronomics. You heard that right, Agronomics is a publicly listed company on the London Stock Exchange. They are basically a venture capital fund investing in startups in the cultured meat and precision fermentation space. Their most interesting investments are Moza Meat, Blunalu, they are invested in solar foods as well. For dairy, they have Formo, but also leather in vitro labs. So they are invested across the entire space of companies in that area. So he dropped this bombshell of an intro at the Climate Tech Conference this year in London, where he made a bunch of interesting predictions about the timeline of the space, but also about market size and investment opportunities. So let's hear what he had to say about the vision and the future of this space. Let's start with dairy. The first industry to be disrupted vastly is the dairy industry. And I estimate that by uh, 10 years time, the conventional dairy industry, which is the biggest single emitter of all intensively farmed industries on the planet will be gone. It'll be absolutely gone. It'll be replaced by much more efficient, much healthier, no antibiotics, no bad stuff, no animal cruelty, uh, alternatives largely led by precision fermentation, which is now on the cusp of being in the market in the United States. Boom, first mic drop moment right there. And it sounded eerily familiar. Where have I heard it before? Oh wait, that's right, in my latest video on the disruption and collapse of the global egg and dairy industry. You can check it out right here. Mr. Mellon and I basically say the same things, which is nice. So he made a harsh prediction. He says that the dairy industry will be gone. It'll be absolutely gone. In 10 years time, so let's say 2032. That's a harsh prediction, but I think you can actually argue for it quite well. Let's see what others have to say on that estimate. The Rethink X report on Agriculture 2030, for example, also estimates the dairy market to drop by 90% until 2030. That is pretty close to gone. It'll be absolutely gone. And they give some historic examples to back this up of products that have been disrupted by fermentation. In this chart, PF stands for precision fermentation. Insulin is an example of a product that has conventionally been derived from animal products until a better, more modern approach for production based on fermentation came along. And you can see the market share of this new product rose in the typical S-curve that usually happens with technological disruption. Other examples are rennet, for example, which is used for cheese. So producing insulin with fermentation is nice and all, but milk is a very different game. Remember in 2020, the global milk production was 960 million tons. To produce this amount of fermented dairy, we need millions of pounds of output per day, and that will require, first of all, upscaling of the bioreactors, from lab scale, which is a couple of liters, to industrial scale, which is 5,000 liters or much, much more in one single bioreactor. Now that's a scientific challenge, of course, but it's also a, a challenge of just scaling up. We need to build all these bioreactors. And that is going to require trillions of dollars, with a T, trillions of dollars of investment in basically this infrastructure to produce this fermented product. Current investors in this space cannot finance this upscaling. They are simply too small. The companies also don't have any money, so they are out as well. Big investors will probably sh stay away from that space for a while, I think, because it's not proven yet. They have no product on the market, it's not proven that the product actually sells, so they are probably weary of this entire industry for a couple of more years. So I think the best option would actually be to partner with conventional dairy industry. These companies have the money, 
the size and let's face it, they have experience in producing milk. So they could help scaling up the production of fermented milk as well. Luckily, they do exactly that. Nestle and Kraft Heinz, for example, are already heavily invested in young startups focusing on fermentation. They're not stupid. They see the writing on the wall. They know that they will go out of business if they don't embrace this new production methodology of fermentation rather than rearing animals. And note how he did not say that all dairy will be replaced by fermented dairy. He just said that the conventional dairy industry will be gone. It'll be absolutely gone. I could actually imagine a scenario where the conventional dairy industry is bankrupt before fermentation can fill all the demand. That would be an interesting scenario. And there's no need to take the entire market out. To bankrupt the dairy industry because they operate on such tiny margins, you only need to take maybe 10% of revenues away. And if we just talk about replacing ingredient products, so not end products like milk or yogurt for consumers, but just whey protein, casein protein, which is really easy to produce using fermentation, that is already 30% of their revenue gone. And that will bankrupt the entire industry, even if we have not fermented a single liter of milk yet. So that would be an interesting scenario. We will see how that plays out. Regarding meat, our man Jamelin made equally bold predictions. In terms of meat, uh, I think it will take about 18 months for these products, which include chicken, beef, mutton, etc., to be on wide dispersal across the main markets, which are Europe uh, and the US, in terms of the established uh, food markets. But they're already on sale in Singapore, already on sale. Um, uh, they're going to be on sale in Qatar, where uh, a company making chicken nuggets called Eat Just has just done a deal with the Qatar government. Uh, and they'll be on sale in the UAE. How is that for a mic drop? 18 months until products are on wide dispersion on markets in the US and in Europe and five years until griddle parity. Let's look at this step by step. First up, wide dispersion on the markets. Technically speaking, cultured meat is already on the European market since 2017, thanks to a very funny stunt by Josh Tetrick, the founder of the company Just. On the very last days of the year after Christmas 2017, he personally flew to the Netherlands, bringing with him a batch of the very first cultured meat that his company just ever produced. And he actually managed to sell this cultured duck meat to a restaurant and a museum in the Netherlands on the 31st of December 2017. That's one day before the 1st of January 2018, because on that day, the novel foods legislation of the European Union was updated. The novel foods legislation regulates the entire food market of the European Union. That is 27 member states at the moment, so it's quite a big market. And on that very 1st of January, it was updated to also include products originating from plants, animals, microorganisms, cell cultures and minerals. That is important because obviously cell cultured meat would from then on fall under this new novel foods legislation. Under this new rule, it would probably still be possible to sell cultured meat, but you would have to go through a very formal regulation process. You have to apply and then there are tests and monitoring and conditions and so on. And Tetrick's idea was that if he sold cultured meat in the European market before this legislation became active, he would have a good argument in court to argue that his food is actually not a novel food, but already on the market. Sadly, that stunt didn't work out. The sales that he made to the restaurant and the museum were later deemed illegal purchases of illegal goods. So yeah, sadly didn't work out, but a funny story nonetheless. But at least there is a clear legislation in place now. For the EU, it's the novel foods legislation. In the US, it's split up between the FDA and the USDA that regulate these new products. So there is a clear path to follow for these companies and the products in order to gain access and to be allowed to sell the products on the market. That's a very important first step. Now let's talk about griddle parity. This is a very important, if not the most important milestone for the entire industry, I believe. Once the cultured meat in the supermarket aisle is actually cheaper than conventional meat, it's absolutely game over for the conventional meat industry, just as Mr. Mellon said as well. There are many good arguments like animal welfare, environmental efficiency and so on, but I think for the average consumer, price is the real breaking point. And guess what? There is a really clear path to price parity as well. 99% of the costs of these cultured products, excluding labor, is the growth medium right now. That is, most importantly, the growth factors, which are needed for the proliferation of these cells. The rest is really cheap stuff. It's water, oxygen, some minerals, and the electricity to heat the bioreactors. 
The Good Food Institute did a very comprehensive study on the costs and development of this growth medium. The lead author, Liz Specht, designed a couple of scenarios of using different growth factors, different combinations, but most importantly, applying economies of scale to this problem. And she concluded that no real scientific breakthrough is necessary, but that it's just a matter of scale and time until the growth medium becomes so cheap that not only price parity for cultured meat can be reached, but that cultured meat will ultimately become much, much cheaper than conventional meat and dairy products. Rethink X also estimated when price parity will be reached. In these cost curve decline chart, you can see that they expected precision fermentation based meat alternatives to reach price parity this year in 2021, which unfortunately has not happened yet, at least not on the market. For cell cultured meat, they expected to reach price parity in 2025. Another estimate comes from the Dutch consultancy CE Delft who did a techno-economic analysis as well as a life cycle assessment of cultured meat, and they estimate price parity in 2030. So that is almost five years after what Mr. Mellon predicts. So, to wrap up, Jim Mellon from Agronomics estimates that the dairy industry will be gone. It'll be absolutely gone. By 2032, and that price parity for cultured meat will be reached in just five years. This is, of course, exciting news, and there are many estimates that support these claims. And I also think there are good reasons to expect cellular agriculture to be much cheaper than conventional products. And these savings rely almost entirely on economies of scale rather than scientific breakthroughs. So it's just a matter of time before the conventional meat and dairy industry will be absolutely game over. And as always, check out my other videos and stick around if you're interested in more updates on the cellular agriculture space, because that's exactly what we are talking about on this channel. See you in the next one.